Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles X. And in this episode, we're going to work on our first story mission, which is, well, to receive a tour of the administrative district from Elma and Lynn, in the hopes that we can become a member of Blade. And the first step towards that is, well, exiting the door. You know, it's not every day we're authorized to let a civilian tour the administrative district. Yeah. Nagi must really, really want him to join Blade. The AD is a bit different from the other districts. It's got everything a Blade would need, all in one place, without any extra fluff. Get a load of that skill! Even the way that they walk is so cool! Oh yeah, work it, baby! Mm -mm. Now this guy gets it! Aren't they just the coolest? Just everything about them! The lasers, the force fields, the bipedal and vehicular transformations! You ever have that dream where you're inside one and it's just transforming over and over and over? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Actually, I, uh, I don't normally show this to people, but I've been working on some Skell fanfiction. Hold on, I'll just pull it up here one sec. Lynn? Oh, uh, right. Sorry. Originally, scales were developed as a defensive measure to counter potential alien threats. It wasn't enough to save Earth, though. We were outnumbered and outgunned. Still, just look around you. New L.A. has gone from basically nothing to this in just two short months. We could never have come so far so fast without scale technology. I'd love to get you into one to see for yourself, but it's not that simple. Well, yeah, duh. For one thing, only blades are allowed to pilot scales. And even then, you need a license. These aren't toys we're talking about. They're complex machines with powerful weapons. And they're a precious resource. We only have so many of them to go around. So yes, as you might imagine, the certification process is a fairly rigorous one. I'm sure you're thinking, where do I sign up for the test? But it's not that simple. They choose you, not the other way around. You can't just walk in the front door and volunteer. There is some criteria. The details are largely hidden, but basically, HQ only allows the cream of the crop to take the test. Blades who go above and beyond in their duties, and for the people of New LA in general. So what do you say? If you become a blade and work hard, I'm sure it'll only be a matter of time before they tap you on the shoulder. Speaking of work, that reminds me. Why don't we check out the mission control board first? That's where we take on our assignments. Good call. Let's head on over. Picking the second option there is hilarious, by I add in. Yeah, if we want to get into a scale as quickly as possible, well, we need to be a Blade member, and the quickest way to being a Blade member is coming over and checking out this bulletin board. So this is mission control. We don't have a dispatch system yet, so Blades usually choose their own assignments. Everyone comes here and selects from the missions available on the board. And it's not just official Blade tasks. Anyone with a request is free to post here. Businesses, citizens, whoever. Yeah, it's basically how anything gets done in New LA, so the board is constantly updating. Just about every Blade will stop by here at some point in their shift. It's like our second home. You'll always find a number of blades around here, blowing off steam or browsing mission control for their next assignment. Whenever I get freed up, I'll stop here first thing to check for any missions I might be suited for. Likewise. And if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo, that's what the scout console is for. We should show you that next. Hey, who's giving this tour anyway? We also have the scout console if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo. And uh, Elma just said that, didn't she? 
So, if you enjoy doing side quests in video games, well, Mission Control is going to help you out a ton because it makes things so much easier, but yeah, we need to be a blade to actually operate it, and the same goes for over here as well. Yeah, I guess we should get our blade ID, huh, since it seems literally everything requires one. Ta-da! The Blade Scout Console. When the going gets tough, the tough go to the Scout Console. You know, to get tougher. If you do end up joining us, you'll quickly realize just how important this little kiosk is. A lot of the mission control assignments are too much for any one blade to handle. They tend to call for multiple members with specialized knowledge or unique skills. This console lets you search for and recruit other blades to fill those roles for just such an occasion. You can't spell blade without team. Sort of. Anyway, awesome, right? So, you're ready to join up? Hang on, Lynn. Take it easy, would you? What? I'm just saying you'd have to be some kind of an idiot not to want to join Blade. Or maybe a crazy person. Oh. And here I thought you might be pressuring our guest. Apology accepted. Now, how about a little shopping? And I'm not talking about the stuff over in the commercial district. I'm talking about Armory Alley. So, Scout Console is, well, just that. If you have friends that you play with online, you can recruit their avatars here and, well, use them to aid you on quests. However, I ain't got no friends, so we're gonna ignore that and instead head over to Armor Alley. And I really did not see the, all the neon signs and advertisements. It really does look like a shopping district over here, even though it's for weapons and armor and, you know, scale machinery. <laughs> I think it fits. Also, I'm really digging this color of purple over here. I don't really know why. So this street's what we call Armory Alley. Blades can requisition equipment from any of the vendors here. I won't lie. Most Blade members face danger on a daily basis. Having the latest gear isn't about impressing your friends. It's a matter of survival. True enough. And that goes not only for your personal armor and weapons, what we call ground gear but for scale equipment as well. You can even buy whole scales. Can you imagine owning your own scale? Ah... Uh, huh? Oh, right, the tour. I think all that's left is the heart of Blade itself. Blade Tower. And the last stop on our tour of the administrative district, and oh my gosh, look at those guns. Dude. <laughs> but as I was saying, I'd love to check out the Armor Alley all day and night, but we have one last stop to take, and you may remember this area because this is where we got dropped off in the last episode, but yeah, Blade Tower itself we will not be able to access for quite some time, but it's good that they show it to you in the beginning because, man, does it look cool. I'm honestly really impressed by, you know, just, it looks like a legitimate tower that exists in real life. And I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, Blade Tower. When we come here, it's usually to stop by Blade HQ. The higher-ups, like Secretary Nagi and Commander Vandom, will spend most of their day here. The government leaders, too. They're based in the tower. Guys like our new Director General Maurice Chausson, for example. Blades sometimes report to the leadership here after we finish key assignments. You'll want to remember this place. And that about does it for our tour. So, what do you think? Pretty amazing setup, right? You can't wait to join Blade, right? Okay, Lynn, seriously, that's enough. We're not here to make a sales pitch. We just want you to have all the facts so you can make an informed decision to join us, or not. Now that you've seen where and how we work, hopefully it made a good impression, but your decision will be just that, your decision. In any case, let's head back to the barracks. Secretary Nagi will be waiting. And all right, we completed our first story mission. Can't say it was too difficult, to be honest with you, but hey, I guess that's why it was the first, and no, I don't want to say. So now that we've completed that, like Alma said, we all we gotta do is go back to the barracks, and oh my gosh, I just, I know it may be a little difficult to figure out, guys, but this game, it's, I guess like every RPG I ever play, because I swear I say this all the time, but it does take a little bit of effort to get to the good part. But like a lot of things in life, it gives you back everything you put into it, and I cannot say that enough. Honey, we're home! Yes, 
Very amusing. Who wants a fresh cup of tea? Thank you, Ms. Gu, but I can't stay long. I just wanted to pass along a request from your commanding officer. Commander Vandom? Hmm. Does it have anything to do with our new arrival? Correct. He stopped by while you were out on your tour. He said he'll come back, but that I shouldn't wait to ask you. <laughs> Here we go. I bet I can guess. You probably can. He wants to fast-track our new friend here for blade duty with a training assignment. What in the hell are we waiting for? As he put it. The commander does have a way with words. <laughs> Makes even my pitch sound smooth. I explained about the memory issues, but he didn't see it as a problem. And to be honest, given our current need for blade recruits, I can't say I entirely disagree. Hey, it's not me you need to convince. Blade service is voluntary, remember? Of course. And I would never force or coerce anyone. Well, friend, what do you say? Can we count on you to do your part? I knew you'd make the right choice. Welcome to the organization. Elmer, he can start on your team. You'll begin training immediately. Yes, Mr. Secretary. With pleasure. All right! Welcome to the Cool Kids Club! Now then, let's discuss that training assignment. We've decided to start you out on a probe installation, just to get your feet wet. I guess we should back up a bit. Here in New LA, we're using a specialized computer system called FrontierNav to help us deploy a sensor grid across Mira. A network of data probes that allows us to monitor conditions and collect all kinds of information about the planet. Expanding that grid and filling in the blind spots is one of Blade's highest priorities. Here, take a look at this. What you're seeing on screen is a terrain map that includes New LA and the surrounding landmass. As you can see, we've divided the area into a series of hexagonal blocks. We call these blocks segments. Together, they form our grid. We determined this was the most efficient pattern given the limited range of our probes. Based on it, we know exactly where we need the probes to go. Now we just have to install them. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. The Frontier Nav probes can also detect the general locations of living things in the vicinity which comes in handy if we need to track down a blade or another citizen. Yes, quite handy indeed. So for this first exercise, you'll be heading here, to that white segment. Go there, install the data probe, and then come back home. Got it. East of the city. In that case, we can take the east gate out of the administrative district, right? We should be there in no time. I'll leave the details on the data probe installation procedure to you, Roma. Of course, Mr. Secretary. All right, you two. Shall we? Yeah. Training or not, let's go install the hell out of that probe. And all right, it's probing time. Install the data probe on the Frontier Nav site and complete your training. So... Probing sites probably isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but you'll soon find out how useful it is, and the new frontier begins! Just like that, we're on the second chapter, and yes, this will complete our Blade training. So now that we've made the decision to join Blade, this is the last task, and we basically need to prove ourselves with just one little mission. It shouldn't be too hard, right? Man, am I glad we pulled an assignment to the east of the city this time. It'd be a long walk all the way back over to the West Gate. Hold on. Are we even sure the East Gate will be open? Last I heard, it was still on lockdown from all the high-level indigen activity. It was, but they just lowered the threat level earlier today. The gates are officially open for business. One of our teams must have gone out there and kicked some furry indigen butt, huh? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me at all. Irina's team is one of our best. How does he know Irina and Gwyn? We ran into them just before we met up with you. 
They were on their way out to an assignment. Well, then that settles it. It must have been them, right? Man, forget this amateur hour pro baloney. Those guys are where the action's at. I'll try not to take that personally. But enough talk. We've got our mission to deal with. Let's head out. Roger. That probe isn't going to install itself. Let's get to the East Gate, shall we? Oh, don't worry, Lynn. This will be a lot more interesting than just installing a probe. And here, Eleonora is going to try and explain the segment map to us. However, there's a lot of information on the gamepad, and we'll be going over this in the next episode. For the time being, though, let's make our way to the Eastern Gate so we can complete this story mission. Now is the time I'd like to explain, guys, that there's a lot to this game. I know I've been saying that for, like, you know, two episodes now, but I want to reiterate that. And I'm going to try my best to break down combat into small little segments that we can figure out as we go. So for in this episode, and oh my god, I think we can, yes, we can see both the moons! Ugh! So cool. Two moons, I wish we had two moons on Earth, but they'd be kind of useless in reality. Well, the moon we have right now is doing a good job, so I guess there's no reason, but as I was saying, today we're going to be discussing cooldowns on our arts in the appendage focus feature and these enemies over here are the perfect level to test that out so what do you say we attack them in code blood i know it's so messed up i mean this addition isn't hurting anybody but when we lock on to an enemy we can also lock on to an appendage and you may notice this green bar if we auto attack or damage with our arts for long enough it can no longer use attacks that are tied to this appendage now Depending on the monster, this will change, and it really is hard to decide early on exactly what you're nullifying, and sometimes it will turn in a position that makes it really hard to target the appendage, but whatever. But now that the green bar has been destroyed, you will see that effect, and it can no longer use, let's just say, a headbutt attack. I don't know if that is its appendage or not, but that is a common strategy when attack- oh! Gold, all right, we got our first gold drop. Awesome, I guess. Targeting that random uh, indigen was a good idea, and we also received a level up. You can easily see your class rank and your level by pressing start on the bottom. It's pretty nice. And if you've never played a role-playing game before, defeat a monster, it gives you EXP. However, in Xenoblade Chronicles, we also get BP, and we'll get into that, well, soon. But now is when I'd like to talk about art cooldown. Now, when you use an art, it goes on cooldown. However, did you know there is a second cooldown? When auto-attacking with a weapon, its corresponding arts, if not used, will go on a second cooldown, and they can gain bonus effects like doing 360 damage with Slit Edge. Holy crud, that's a lot at this point in the game, but... Yes, sometimes it's a good idea not to spam your arts, because their secondary effects can be very helpful. So just keep that in mind, and alright, another indigen has been defeated. So in short, keep in mind that yes, the green bar does add to your secondary cooldown. But speaking of cooldowns, did you know there is a third cooldown for your arts, and we will check that out right now. So if we examine our arts, we can see that there is a secondary cooldown effect and a tertiary cooldown effect. What is tertiary cooldown? Well, we'll get to that in due time, but for some arts, like the damaging ones, wow, the damage goes up a ton, and the fact that we can reuse some of them as well. Secondary cooldowns are an important part of battle you should always be keeping in mind, because they may just save your butt. But now that we've taken care of that, it's time that we get back to our main goal, which is, well, to install that probe, so let's huff it and make it to that site, and you can see in the distance, yeah, that giant pillar of light is exactly where we need to go to install the probe, and oh my god. I like that part of the song. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to pause for a moment, and what the... A pile of monkey corpses. Gotta say, it's not the most warm welcome I've ever had into a new planet. Here. 
You don't think that one Sinicula could have killed all these Simeus? Unless... Unless... what? This is bad. What's bad? I don't follow you. That Sinicula. It's a tyrant. Huh? But it looks just like any other Sinicula. Think about it. Your typical Simeus is way higher up on the food chain than your typical Sinicula, right? Usually we'd find one Simeus standing over three or four Sinicula corpses. But here the tables have been turned. And I don't see a single trace of any other indigens in the area. There's only one explanation. That Sinicula is a tyrant. Let me check the Blade Report database. If there's a tyrant this close to the city, someone must have run across it. Bingo. There was a Sinicula tyrant sighted not too long ago. But it was a couple of segments further out. It could have followed the blade that spotted it back towards New L.A., or come here to feed, or who knows what. That's crazy. I can't believe there's a tyrant right on our doorstep, and HQ isn't doing a thing about it. Well, don't forget why they sent us here in the first place. Frontier Nav's range is still limited. Oh, right. They couldn't track it if there's no local code. They must have lost it when it went off the grid. Probably explain. Tyrant is our term for any indigenous life form that falls outside of our usual threat ranking system. In other words, they're too powerful for us to even measure how dangerous they would be to take on. And too powerful doesn't always just mean physically strong. If a creature has even a single especially nasty trait, it's classified as a tyrant. Even some of Blade's very best teams have come back with serious injuries after running into a tyrant in the field. If they come back at all. Hmm. Well, all right. I'm game if you are. Count me in, Elma. Let's do this. If we're gonna settle here on this planet, we're gonna have to get used to dealing with tyrants now and then. We can't just keep running forever, you know? Besides, I'd never forgive myself if someone else ended up getting hurt because we just left it here. All right. Let's do it. But don't push it, okay? Either of you. If we can take it down, great, but if not, even just luring it away would be a moral victory. As long as we buy enough time to install the probe, we can use Frontier Nav to track it or any other tyrant that comes this close to the city from now on. Just make sure you're ready before we attack. This will be tougher than anything else we've faced. So our next objective is to take on a tyrant. Yeah, this may be a little bit difficult, but luckily Lynn has some advice for us. Leveling up our arts. You may recall that I was talking previously about BP. Well, now that is going to take effect. So let's open up our arts palette and check out our moves again. Yes, the arts are gonna be very important in this game. So at the top, we see current battle points. We can expend these to level up our arts. However, a general rule of thumb in Xenoblade Chronicles is to not spend all of your BP in one place because arts do have a cooldown. You're going to be stuck with level one arts while your level five art is still on cooldown. So I think we'll put three points in a slit edge since it is my favorite move so far. <laughs> that should be good. You could also update your equipment, but at the moment we have pretty much the best equipment I can use. And all right, guess we're ready to take on this tyrant. I don't know, guys. Can we do this? Uh, let's lock onto the appendage and get started. So. Now is the time I'd like to talk about moves in Xenoblade Chronicles. So when battling opponents, essentially every single attack, both yours and the opponents, even if they're auto attacks, are area of effect. You saw that the Tyrant put its foot down. If we were close to that, that would damage us. But since we're far away, and let's try and get that in, all right. It did not do anything, and we are not doing amazing here. I'm gonna try my best, and that is resistant, that is a pain. Possibly that would have gone through if 
I targeted a different appendage, but I'm trying to break his head just so I can show something off. And I hope it occurs here. And all right, let's go ahead and use slit edge. And it is off cooldown. No, it's not off cooldown. I'm just not close enough because we want to. Oh, crap. I was trying to use Elma's soul voice, but she got toppled, so now I can't use it. It may have been a better idea to focus down the legs, but so far we're doing all right. We almost got the head destroyed. Just a little bit more. I need a position for slit edge. There we go, side. Oh, wait, it toppled. We can do it! Okay, good. That was some really good damage. Let's get the flame grenade in there. No, still resistant. That's fine, though. We did some decent damage. Let's go ahead and... Oh, my God. Come on. It's using the laser. Please don't get hit by that. Okay, looks like everyone dodged it. Awesome. This is why you want to spread out in battle. If everyone gets hit by an attack, yeah, that's going to do a lot of damage. And since there are no dedicated healers in Xenoblade, that's an issue. And so far, we're doing fine. The head has now been destroyed. You can see a little bit of damage on it. If I tilt the can, yeah, just like there. Now that it's been destroyed, though, it's time to focus on a different appendage. And this tyrant is almost destroyed, man. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, we just did a ton of damage. So let's finish this guy off. Doesn't look like he has much more fight left in him. And yeah, flame grenade does a little bit of damage to the feet. It's probably done that from the start, but <laughs> oh well. We are. Nice work, Lin. You fought well. You did too. Now let's get down to business and install that data probe. If we stay here for long, there's no telling what other playmates might show up. This beam of light indicates a frontier nav site. It marks the ideal spot to bury the probe. Okay, the probe should be ready for insertion. I'll just boot it up. Thanks, Lynn. The top half of the cylinder contains the probe itself. The bottom half is a laser. It dissolves the soil so the probe can burrow to the proper depth. We tried just planting them on the surface at first, but we kept running into problems with the local wildlife damaging the goods. Burying them is going to save us all a lot of time and headaches in the long run. We all set? Yes, ma'am. Whenever you're ready. Why don't you do the honors? You can launch it right from your comm device. Give it a try. Installation complete. We are now online with a solid connection to Frontier Nav. Excellent. See, at the end of the day, there's really not much to it. The hardest part was calculating the ideal probe locations. We need them spread out evenly to maximize data collection. Yep, planting probes is easy. And the more we plant, the more likely we are to find missing crew. So anytime you see a probe site, there's no excuse not to plant that sucker. That'll do it for your training. Let's head back to the barracks and report to Secretary Nagi. Nice. We defeated our first tyrant and also, well, install the probe. And we got another gold drop. What the heck, dude? That's some pretty crazy luck. And I'm Lau, a Pathfinder. If we're going to grow a frontier nav, we need to install more data probes. To play one, simply approach a vacant frontier nav probe site and press A. This requires mechanical skills, so make sure to level that up. And here's Elma's advice on engaging tyrants. Basically, the bigger the tyrant, the worse idea it is to tackle it on ground. That's where skills come in, and we will get into skill combat, well, when we get one. But yes, we uh, defeated our first boss of Xenoblade Chronicles X. And in the next episode, we're going to elaborate further on probes and how useful they are to surviving here on Mira. But that is all the time I have for today, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching this episode. And in the next part, we explore more of Mira and choose our division. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.